Holiday Inn Express, Kyle Field. Last Saturday in November, number seven LSU, number 22 Texas A&M. Here in College Station, 52 nothing. But LSU has won in this state nine straight times. And the Tigers will start at the 25 yard line with up to the 12th man roar at him here. Bernard Fournette in the game on the first play. Leonard's little brother at his first ever touchdown last week against Rice. This is this AM defensive front. Nick Brosette, no place to go. It is a downhill physical front. Burrow incomplete. Jamar Chase couldn't grab it. Here in the SEC to Rashad Paul, who's dangerous. Fair catch here, right in front of the 20 yard. He's into that coaching staff. And as expected, right to the ground, Travion Williams. He's near the Twix. And after a fake to Williams, goes to Sternberger, and Sternberger is ridden out of bounds by Jacoby Stevens. That's a loss. On under pressure, down he goes, Devin White near the 10 yard line. up that time versus Devin White. If anyone's going to get you out of trouble, it's Braden Mann. And Mann has this one drop at the 42-yard line, and it takes an a and m bounce down to at the 37. No score finish the season. And a win sends LSU to the New Year's Six. Burrow on first down. Completion right near the sticks. Just short Stephon's hobble with that lower leg injury. Again on second and one, Brosette will lose yardage. As it's Caper Smith making the play. Did the same thing on the last drive. That's the inside penetration once again. Quick upfield was Bobby Brown inside out. Under pressure, Brosette to the sideline. Too tall for Terrace Marshall. Two straight drives, LA. Was the concussion protocol. He did clear it. Practiced well, Coach Elko said before the game. No limitations whatsoever as Paul with a fair catch inside the 10. Aggies backed up. Down. With Travion Williams standing at the goal line, and Williams makes one man miss and gets a couple. Back 100 tackle seasons after that last one. Plenty of time underneath throw is complete. And it's third down. Jamon Osmond. Trevion Williams with the first first down of the game. And pass a couple of Aggies, Greg Hill and Cyrus Gray tonight. Already in the top five. And a first and ten. Mon looks around and finds Courtney Davis. Not his first. Fake to Williams, and it's Davis in stride, and he's past the 40-yard line. From the Houston area playing in this game, 13 yards for him here. Mon, deep ball. One-on-one, -on -one, Sternberger dropped it. Time, LSU dodging a bullet with the drop pass. Corbin blocking in front of Travion Williams and doing an outstanding job as Travion's wrestled down by the face mask inside the 40. Matt Austin tonight's Referee. So here's Corbin. This is their ponies set. And Corbin is going to lead. He'll become like a lead blocker. And you see the line blocks to the left and the backs flow to the right. So the entire defense, their keys lie to them. 
You see that offensive front go to one side as it ends with the face mask. You tack up additional yardage and an explosive play for the Aggies. Turns into a 40-yard play with the penalty. Williams makes people miss at the line, and Delpit drags him down at the 11. Finishes falling forward. Take to Williams. Sideline, and that's a nice dive by Osborne to get the first down as Delpit was right there again. The Aggies right at the 10. On the 10th play of the drive, Williams. Look at that lateral move. Touchdown. Talk about a physical finish. He is clearly in the end zone. Makes that drive with a score. LSU from the 25 Monday. And out into the formation fast for the Tigers. And for the first time, it's Clyde edwards Lair in the game. Burrow fakes to him. And underneath finds D. Anderson. They don't. And it is Jonathan Giles just short yards. Does LSU go to the ground? Yes, and Elair moves the chains. This bowl that says the scheme is totally different from what then Matt Canada threw at him. Elair back near the 40 yard line, Elko said. He's out of rhythm and uncomfortable. Burrow. Under pressure takes off, he can run, and he takes a hit from Otaro Alaka near midfield. A long count, Dalen Mack is off sides on that play, and Burrow just goes to the ground. Offside, defense on the nose guard. Five yard penalty, repeat first out. More on Burrow, let's go down. Team after the Georgia victory. Last month, long, another long snap count, and the Aggies are ready for it. In the backfield, meeting Hilaire, OT as they call him, tackle for loss. And, and another negative yardage play on a rush attempt. Quick throw to Giles. And he has blockers in front inside the Aggie 40 yard line. Even on an early down, the screen game is imperative. Throw a deep shot. One on one down there to Jefferson, incomplete. Monday and Tuesday. Brosette dumps it off to Bur Burrow. Dumps it off to Brosette rather, and nicks up to the 32-yard line for five. Late clock down to two. Brosette flushed out. Burrow rather a first down run. Near the 25-yard line, Joe has showed off the wheels a couple of times. It's the third first down conversion on this drive and what is the 11th play. And set straight ahead. For Burrow keeps wide open space. Touchdown! His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. From uh, he endeared himself to that program pretty quickly. That would seal the deal. You can stream college football also. Well, their last possession. Make to Williams here. Mon over the top of that LSU defense. Incomplete for Sternberger. If there but it doesn't slow down Williams another first down run for the junior from Houston up near the 45 yard line for Hyde. now one tonight barring a touchdown here that's the way it'll finish in the regular season set play for the Aggies and 13 players are from Houston in this game tonight as mine tries for Sternberger again in Third and eight, Mon wide open to Osmond. First down, Aggies. Hey, 
Michael Williams, and Mon takes off. He can run too. He gets the edge. Stays in bounds inside the 20. Mon throws again. It's a rifle that Davis could not handle. Incomplete. Mon changes directions, shows off the wheels, first and goal. Actually, you mark him down at the 11, say that's where he's going. With Gillespie, the 12th man, in front of Williams. And Mond instead will try to dive ahead. And it looks like his helmet and the football. Here's the 10th play of this one. And Williams this time wrapped up by Ed Alexander, the nose guards in the backfield. On in the month of November, second and goal. Mon tries to dive back to the original line of scrimmage. Devin White. Mon Sternberger touchdown. What is effectively a four-man slide? They're going to pick up whatever ends up over here. Now watch what ends up happening. They're going to end up running a stunt, a blitz, and a wrap. And everyone is picked up. Travion Williams is in there to help. He's an excellent pass protector. That is a clean pocket. Six protectors, six brushers, and a clean pocket for Kellen Mond and a touchdown for AM. A little under center play action. Old school football, Morrow. First down catch past the 35-yard line. It's a six-different receiver that Burrow has found so far. 13-yard reception. Into traffic somehow. Chase made that catch. They, what a good-looking get-off-the-bus team this is. Burrow gives himself up inside the 45-yard line. Pushing for Joe on the season now. With Chase in motion now at the top of the screen. He goes to him, and he bobbles the football. They call it incomplete. And it gets to Austin Deculus. Good ball. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. We're in the home of the 12th man. It's fitting that the crowd noise picked up five yards for its defense and makes it all the more difficult for this LSU offense to convert. Keep in mind, on the previous third down conversions, it was Joe Burrow with nowhere to go with the football having to scramble to pick up the first. Easy throw there to Derek Dillon. Dillon's inside the 40. And it'll be marked right near that yellow line. That looked like a pretty favorable spot. Bernard Fournette who was in the game on the first play, in now as a receiver, and he's wide open inside the 30, and he's inside the red zone to the 19. And it might be a delay of game. Part of the snap, delay of game, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Once they pierce the 20. Now outside of that after the penalty. And outside the 30 after Dalen Mack gets the sack. Joe Burrow has hurt AM with the scramble. This time they're going to end up running a stunt. And Dalen Mack, he's going to start on the inside. He's going to end up on the outside. This is one of the ways to kind of clean up the rush lanes. You don't want a quarterback to have anywhere to escape. We mentioned the protection issues by LSU. Dale and Mack doing a good job getting the quarterback on the ground. Mike Elko said, I don't know what happened with this guy before I got here, and I don't care. He's playing his best football as a senior. Burrow just trying to get some positive yardage. Gets back to the 31, but not a BK yard line. Incomplete. 
And they're saying this is a live ball. Miles Jones initially ruled a touchdown. Jamar Chase, the intended receiver again. This is twice now, and that ball's clearly on the ground. But twice now with Chip. It brings a sigh After of relief. After the forward pass contact to the ground, therefore it is an incomplete pass. Ball will be replaced the 31-yard line. and ms had a block this year, but they're backing off. And he hits the left upright, no good. He's had a fantastic season with a 54-yarder against Miami and beat Auburn. Can't knock it through here. State where size matters, that's a that's serious bragging rights. It's Williams again, and he's tripped up past the 40-yard line to the studio in Darinoko. In Aggie rushing history on that last play. He's past the 45-yard line here. He can pass Cyrus Gray for third all-time. And remember, he's just a junior under previous head coach Kevin Summer, but it certainly will now. Here in mind. Will be tracked down by Devin wow. White. Look at that open field speed. <laughs> you, know, you forget sometimes that Devin White is 240 pounds. He had a sack earlier on Mond. He was on top of the passer almost a On a third and eight, Aggies pick up the blitz, and Sternberger is running for daylight inside the 20-yard line. How in the world is Jace Sternberger not a finalist for the Mackey Award? I mean, this guy, all he does is just make big plays. He's had a couple of drops. He had a drop earlier. But in 11 of 12 games, he's had a 20-plus yard reception. It's 36 more there. And Williams for three to the 16. And with all kinds of time, incomplete to Trevor Wood. And terrific scoring touchdowns in this position tonight. But Mon will be stopped shy running into Devin White there, fourth down. Leighton Mann, the punter, the kickoff specialist, and the holder with a perfect one there. And Small sneaks it in. And the lead is 10. Closer to two hours, depending on who's driving away from the former rival, Texas Longhorns. Is that ball? Goes out of bounds and will give LSU the ball at the 35. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team number 34. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. That's adding to some of the frustration. Can LSU score quickly? Double coverage attempt to Stefan Sullivan, game number 12, despite a 9 and 2 record and ranked seventh in the country. Burrow on the move to the sideline. That's incomplete to Jefferson out of bounds. Plays since that Georgia contest. The third and 10. That's a good one to chase. And it's a first down for 11. Burrow with plenty of time. The scamper out of bounds into Aggie territory. Burrow runs for seven more. And it's now second and three. And it's Chase to the 41. First down, clock stops as they move it. LSU with one timeout. And as you can see, now you pick up that first down, you're in plus territory. Now LSU trying to snap quickly. Burrow looking for Jefferson, incomplete. That ball, six points. flushed out again and Jefferson makes the catch inside the 40 down to the 37 to this world well, she's almost forfeited that run game 
and he takes off again and dives near the first down to the 31. Looks like he's got it, he does. And once again, it's the scramble ability of Burrow and the poor pass rush integrity that time by AM. Once again, the edge rusher caught inside and Burrow with a clean escape lane. Goes for it all. In zone, knocked away at the last second as two number 10s fight for the ball. Stephon Sullivan, the intended target, but Miles Jones knocks it away. Miles Jones has earned the right to play in the last month with exceptional defense. Burrow leads DeAnderson too far, third down. AM so far has been content to rush four. Do it again, and Burrow goes down as he's dragged down by Landis Durham. It's fourth down. Cole Tracy from 47 yards, missed from 49 last time. Redemption here, and it's a one-score game at the half. Some documented frustrations amongst the receiving core for the Tigers. Aggies get it first from the 25-yard line that LSU has to contend with tonight. But AM gets it first here in the third quarter, and they go right back to Williams, who gets a couple now at 98 yards rushing tonight. It's as far as carries per game. On with the pocket collapsing, tries to dump it off incomplete. Jamon Osmond staying on the field. Avoids the Delpit rush once. He almost ran him down again. Incomplete to Osmond. The 53-yarder his first time tonight. Another moon ball. It takes Giles back inside his 15-yard line, and he's tackled near the 10. Wow. That is a 58-yard punt. And it's Trayvon Fuller with the tackle and Edwards Elaire tonight. They go right to Brosette, and that's his first positive play of the game, eight yards. And third downs that have been there on doing. It's Brosette again, first down run past the Aggie, their own 25-yard line. Able to open here in the third quarter with two strong runs. Nine yards and then seven more, and now Burrow back to the air, and it's Jefferson getting loose. He's at midfield. 24 yards for the sophomore. And another five yards after the catch. See Terrell Dotson trying to come back in coverage and drop underneath. And Dotson doesn't wrap up as he falls into Jefferson. You see Jefferson finishing that catch physically with a stiff arm. Set picks up the blitz for Burrow. He leads Fournette perfectly. He can't make the catch. Productive as a receiver out of the LSU offensive backfield. Burrow underneath to the 44 to Derek Dillon. Pick up of six. Full slide protection. Able to keep Burrow nice and clean. They want to negate any of that pressure for the AM defensive front, but so far, not lined up. And this is a catch by Marshall, and a flag comes in inside the 40 down near the 37. Really establishing the rumper to protecting well. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 people on the field. Penalties decline. Play results in a first out. Receiver that Joe Burrow is connected with so far tonight. Bounce this one off to Brosette. to Edward Z. Lair and runs right at that Aggie in front, Justin Matabike. They're going to walk up some of their linebackers, but still, again, some confusion with their lineup. Burrow escapes inside the 25, first down Tigers. Well, what did Jimbo Fisher say at halftime? 
we got to maintain our rush integrity. This time, Otara Alaka coming in there inside. And Joe Burrow, that time just a fantastic job, escaping to the right. 12 more now to 77 yards rushing on the game is Brosset inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. And these scrambles, it has to be debilitating. You see LSU jumping the football again on a second and short. Brosset, no place to go this time. Reacting because it was another quick snap. This one, another quick one, too. Looks like Burrow is right at the marker. Yeah. 11 games coming into this night. Losing the time of possession battle again, but they're there to meet Brosette. No place to go. It's Durham and Kingsley Kiki. Option, Burrow elects to keep it. And he a big form tackle by Donovan Wilson down at the seven. That's twice where we've seen Burrow get stuck by the Aggies. Earlier was by Alaka. This time, Donovan Wilson. That is a clinic real tackle. Looks like Pat Fisher for the Washington Redskins in the 70s. You teach guys how to tackle that way. But a third down, and this has vexed the Aggie defense all game. The ability for LSU, despite coverage downfield, to buy time, but in the red zone, easier for a defense to collapse. One on one, end zone, caught! Jefferson! Earlier in the game, we saw Miles Jones. And he was able to double move by Jefferson, and Renfro gets caught looking in the backfield too long. I think we might see another Georgia quarterback play some too next week with Justin Fields. Can't wait for that game. Tie game here with, say, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Travion Williams, the fake, loading up deep down the field, incomplete to Kendrick Rogers. We haven't called his name yet tonight. We haven't called Greedy Wilk now against the Horn Frogs. Pick to Williams. Mon rifles one over the middle, almost picked off by Delpit off the carom. He's a little bit late on this RPO. And he's reading it. You see Devin White checks up the windows there, but the pressure made Mon kind of hitch comfortable. And this one's incomplete to Davis, who was covered up. Now, earlier, relatively clean. We had to wait for Davis to come open late. Oh, catch made, and it's dropped! Dropped by Giles, and it's picked up by Buddy Johnson. Fair catch made by Giles, but he muffs it. He made the fair catch signal, but he didn't make the catch. Giles coming up, trying to field that. Braden man, you know, he kind of undershot this one. Williams bounces off of Tigers to the 25. AM is still searching for its first first down of the quarter with that last run. And he's now inside the 20, down to the 19, right near the first down marker. Sideline, but out of the game. Tyler Shelvin takes his spot on a first and 10. Mine. End zone incomplete. Short for Osmond. Runs into Shelvin, the redshirt freshman from Lafayette, Louisiana. And he'll take off here, first and goal. Well, why not tear a page out of the Joe Burrow third down conversion book? Because he's practically riding one tonight. Look at that rush lane, it's huge. Mon still wanted to try to get it downfield. He wants to scramble to throw. 
but finally decides just to tuck it. Thought twice about trying to juke Devin White in the open field and just said, forget it, I need to convert. And he was able to do so to get a fresh set of downs inside the 10-yard line. An eight-yard gain. Puts him there at the eight. In pistol set, it's Williams. Down near the five. Staying on the ground. And Williams is near the two, third and goal. Relatively effective as a passer in the red zone. But he can also run if you get it on the perimeter. It's Williams instead. Touchdown. He has the third best rushing total in Aggie history. Oh. And coming out is Edward Zilaire. And it's Mann that makes the tackle at the 25-yard line. The last time A&M beat LSU was 1995. Corey Pulling finding Albert Connell for the touchdown, but it was Leland McElroy. Look at those shoulder pads. God. A three-yard run there, and then scampering for 33 more Aggies. Beat LSU 33-17. R.C. Slocum's in the house tonight, as he typically is watching this one. The offensive coordinator for him that night, Steve Ensminger, <laughs> who's the OC now, of course, at LSU. And bulldozed is Burrow by Debion Renfro. They showed a too high safety look. Debion Renfro, he does a good job. He didn't tip it too early. But he comes from the boundary. Watch this. He's just going to shoot right at the snap. And Burrow never felt it until it was too late. He got right to the bottom of his drop. And as he was setting up, Renfro was on top of it. Wasn't a clean tackle. But Burrow went down. Aggies have had difficulty getting to Joe Burrow and getting him on the ground. It hasn't been getting the pressure. It's keeping him in the pocket and getting him down. Of nine there. And now the underneath throw to Morrow, who gets back near the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and just over 10. Aper Smith with another tackle. A negative yardage play, and they've needed it. We talked about LSU's efficiency on first down. And even when they've gotten into third and longs, their ability to convert. Now, this is a third and 10 plus. We saw already here in the second half, early in the first half as well, regardless of the coverage downfield, Burrow's ability to scramble upfield. Now, you see AM with only three bigs, three down linemen in the game. One of them dropping back, but a couple dropping Burrow. Tyree Johnson gets home for the third sack. Tyree Johnson, number three, and he ends up beating the cut block of Nick Brissett. You know, that's the difference. You talk to, you know, running backs and what's asked of them. You got to stay up right there. You try to cut, you know, steps right over him does Tyree Johnson and gets a sack. LSU had all of the momentum dominating the third quarter. Aggies don't have a first down and then the muff punt. Everything has changed as Paul gets hit immediately near the 25 yard line. It's been a roller coaster. That was aggressive. There's a lot happening on that roller coaster. Fast pass for that. Travion Williams. Maybe a yard. Looking for his first completion this half. Doesn't get it there as Buckley can't make the catch, Chris. For the third quarter. Mine won't ever get a chance at this one. Down he goes, Richard Lawrence, the first to it. And they brought five that time. His own 31 yard line. And this is man's best of the night. 26, Giles 
with a flag down is past the 40 yard line. During the return, illegal block in the back, 31 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul, first out. Braden Mann with a 56 yard punt there, Chris. Yeah, the best punter in the nation took an interesting path to get to his position. When he was growing up, he played linebacker. There he is, number 11 for Cypress Fairbanks High School in Texas. But he broke his back twice, and it was after his freshman year that doctors said, hey, you got to take it easy. You can't do this anymore. No more tackling, no more lifting weights. So that's when he converted to being punter. He said, that was my only way to play college football. I asked him, how'd you get so good? Ah, I just practice. And Brosset takes off as he gets near the 35-yard line. Man is still making tackles, though. Made one on a kickoff tonight, and of course, recovered a fumble against South Carolina earlier this season on a punt. So while he's not supposed to be playing every down, he takes advantage when he is out there is Burrow in the LA. No trouble with Burrow and Brosset, but Nick is able to get the football from him and bring it to midfield for a gain of four. Renfro on the tackle. The exchange kind of muddied it up and Jaden Peavy Beats the block of Damian Lewis at right guard. Missed a chance for a tackle for loss. Burrow cannot escape as Dalen Mack just holds on to Burrow's leg for what seemed like an eternity. You know, sometimes I think Tempo has gotten the best of LSU tonight. Because this time there was some confusion. It looked like, I don't know what Sadiq Charles was thinking if he had help from his tight end there as if they had a full slide protection where the entire offensive line blocks to the right. But it looked like he was locked up with Mack, and Mack just kept on working upfield to get Burroughs to the ground. Burroughs steps up, and now he's down. Otaro Alaka. We talk about the secondary coming into this game, but for most of tonight, they've held up. Now this time, you see you had two Aggie defenders kind of hovering around. Both Dodson and Alaka were going to spy. They were going to make sure that Joe Burrow did not escape. So you devoted five basically to the passer that time to keep him in the pocket. Alaka making his 38. Career start as Paul makes the fair catch at the 19 yard line. Following the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of the kicking team, 15 yard penalty for the end of the run, first down. That's number six's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Timeout. Tough call there. 15 yards on LSU if that's all it was. As Williams is ahead for a few. Devin White again with another tackle. Nine tackles for Devin White. And he's in on that tackle. Past the 40, up to the 42 yard line. And a third and two. Mon looks to Gillespie, and the 12th man is past the 45 into LSU territory. Be the biggest play of the second half for AM. And how fitting that it would be to Gillespie sneaks out of the backfield and able to pick up not only a first down but a chunk play. You get that number if you represent everyone here. And Gilly, as they call him, a former walk-on the scene today. Georgia playing its best football of the season. Meanwhile, Kellen Mon now two straight completions. But this one is a loss and a fumble. It's stripped away. Streaking the other way is Michael Divinity. Touchdown, LSU. Three guesses who rips the ball out. Now, Travion Williams, he might have been down before this ball came out. He had to avoid a tackle right away. Greedy Williams came up, and it was Devin White who got out there, and he's got his, uh, he 
you see is you have to check this off your bucket list. If you have never been to Kyle Field, the largest house in the Southeastern Conference and in the great state of Texas. Tied at 24 apiece after LSU's Greedy Williams recovers the fumble that Devin White forced. And eight takeaways for LSU. Colin Mond trying to find a rhythm here in the half, and it's not going to happen there as he is lit up in the backfield by Jacoby Stevens to the studio in dark. The win-loss record for AM as well. Big victory for Baggies over the Wildcats. After a five-yard loss, this isn't going to do anything either. His divinity was right there to greet Travion again. Third and 16 with a quarterback who's struggling. Instead, they just go to the ground with Williams. And they'll pick up a few to give Braden Mann a little bit more room. Man, and a great punt. It's caught by Giles inside the 25. It's a 53-yard punt. Try this game off. Well, Mond only has two second half completions. Burrow seven for eight. And Leonard Fournette turns on the Jets, breaks tackles as an inside the 35. It's a 46-yard run. Debian Ren Renfro, the corner, he gets hung up inside. Nobody set the edge. And Fournette was able to get outside. Larry Pryor coming over at safety with a pretty poor tackling effort. Fournette picked up another four yards. Pryor just trying to bounce him out of bounds, and Fournette wasn't having it. 58 total rushing yards on the season before that big game. And now it's Brosset breaking tackles. He dives ahead to the 21. The would be tackle. Brosette, first down. Burrow giving the sign for first down as soon as he handed it off. Defense was gassed. Fake to Brosette. Moreau. Touchdown. Bulldozing his way to give the LSU Tigers the lead. I didn't think Moreau was going to be able to get out. It looked like he was hung up at the line of scrimmage, and he was able to fight his way loose and not only make the catch. Back machine this season. And he does it again, and the Aggies start at the 25-yard line. Shake it off and get back in this game. Come on with time, and Sternberger the first half touchdown is good for God. Williams stops and runs ahead past the 35 for a first. Arm instead runs to the bottom and out of bounds shy of the 40-yard line. Now LSU is going to match up with Sternberg, and Jacoby Stevens has done an excellent job so far. Mon, a strike to Osmond, and it's another Aggie first down. Osmond and Mon. Andy Williams back in, and here comes a reverse, a flip back to Mon. Incomplete, looking for Sternberger, but a flag comes in. There's no foul for pass interference. The ball was uncatchable. Yeah. Check it out. Mon with time, and it's Osmond streaking to the middle again inside the 45 yard line. Another nice pickup by AM with the blitz. Travion Williams stepping up one on one with Devin White all alone, and we talked about that. Williams got the short end of the stick earlier with a similar pickup with White. And Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator for LSU, said, we can beat the offensive line, but Williams is as good as anyone at picking up those blitzes. And then he goes to the ground and almost bounced off a Tiger defender there. But Delpit makes the tackle, and the Aggies with their best drive of the second half. From the LSU 42. Come on, safety valve to Buckley. The big six foot two receiver from Cedar Hill. Come on. 
incomplete, looking for Osmond, who was covered up. It's Terrence Alexander that was there. You see Osmond saying, man, I got to get a P.I. right there. And Alexander, he was a little bit off target, I think, because of that, having to throw off platform. On the third and five, Mond has no place to go, and down he goes as Glenn Logan that you just referenced with that awesome. Williams takes off inside the 35 and short. Jimbo Fisher wasn't able to do it there, and now LSU goes to the ground with Brosette. A&M against USC. Meanwhile, second and eight. And on an option play, Brosette will block for Burrow. And Joe's ahead to the 40. And A&M will use their last time out to put it away. Burrow wrapped up by Kiki and company. Well, he went back to the play that worked well earlier. It ended up being... Zach Von Rosenberg barely gets it off. And Paul with a fair catch at the 23-yard line. As one of his own players got in the way there. The throws haven't been on target. The receivers have not come down with catches that they could have made, albeit tough catches. And first and 10. Incomplete into the hands of Buckley. That's two drops for Cameron Buckley here in the second half. He's pick up the blitz. Munn incomplete and almost picked off by Delpit. To the sideline. This catch made by Davis who reaches out for the first down. It's a pickup of 12. I'm glad he got that first down. If he stays in bounds and he's short of the first down, the clock stays running. Battles his way to get to the first. They move the sticks and they're able to line up quickly. Under a minute to go. Come on, with time to Davis again and another first down up near the 47. Clock stopped momentarily with 52 seconds left. You can see now. Maybe the best rhythm we've seen AM get into after back to back completions. Come on. Dangerous pass that's incomplete. Greedy Williams had just as good a chance at that as Rodgers did. Only the second target to Kendrick Rodgers this game. And this ball was in the air too long when you throw into Greedy Williams' side of the field. Lucky that wasn't a pick six going the other direction. No timeouts. And almost 54 yards to go. For Texas A&M down seven. Mon trouble with the snap. Almost went down to a knee. And that ball is picked off. It's Delpit that will put it away with his sixth interception of the season. LSU is going to 10 wins. He just took his eyes off the snap. Eric McCoy threw a strike back there. Devin White right there to create the pressure. The entire play was off. Devin White, of course, right in Kellen Mond's face, but just took his eyes off of it. I think he saw the blitz coming. He knew Travion Williams was having to come in there for a pickup. They may be taking a look to see if Devin White they're going to take a look to see if there was targeting on Kellen Mond. And of course, LSU fans are going to be pretty upset if that's the case. It stands, Delpit, with his sixth pick of the season, which would lead the SEC. But let's take a look here as White comes in 
after Mon struggles with this snap and that uh. knee almost went down. That is what they're looking at. Yeah. Uh, did he possess the ball when his knee was down? Or did his knee go down before he grabbed the football? Touching the live ball with your knee down. Yeah. I mean, the play is dead. Looks like that his knee was down. And the LSU defensive coaches who were in the box right next to ours, they were out of there. They thought the game was over. There's only makers in any secondary in all of college football. So it'll be a loss of 10 yards. And I believe that Matt Austin and the replay official are trying to see how much time to put back on the clock here. After review, the quarterback's knee was down at the 39-yard line. Ball will be placed there where it will be third down. Please set the game clock to 36 seconds. That's a heck because, of a... Because Texas A&M has no timeouts remaining and no way to stop the clock, the play is subject to a 10-second subtraction. Please set the game clock to 26 seconds. The clock will start on the ready for play. That's a heck of a catch by the replay booth. And potentially an important one, obviously. What would have been a game-ending interception by Delpit. And the Aggies still with some life. Third and 18. Clock about to start. Here's Sternberger. He's been quiet most of this game. And they try for him, and it's Delpit again. It puts a hand in front. Well, they try to get it to him. Grant Delpit, great break on the ball. Had a pick before, negated, said Mond was on the ground. Therefore, the play was dead. Another pass defended. By one of the best safeties you'll see. Last chance on a fourth down for the Aggies. Mond steps up. Catch made at the 41-yard line by Davis. That's a first down. Yeah, hurry up, get over this football, snap and spike. Ten seconds left. In ten seconds. Mond, catch inside the 20 by Rogers. And now AM has a realistic shot after a 23-yard completion, but the clock will start as they move it, and do they get it off? At least initially it says all zeros. We'll see if Matt Austin changes that. The offensive line was kind of shuffling around. That three seconds to play after that catch and reception to Rodgers. It's awfully close. That's bang, bang if there ever was one. With three seconds, you do have enough time to clock it. On the same weekend five years ago with the kick six, of course, they put a second back on the clock for Alabama. And that led to one of the more famous plays in college football history. One second, hadn't gotten the snap. He's got it. The ball's down with one second showing. See the ball on the ground right there. Here's one second on the play on the game clock. After review, when the quarterback spiked the ball, there was one second on the clock. Who set the game clock to one second? The second down. Clock will start on the snap. Iterate bath on the play that was overturned. Here's Sternberger that we were talking about before. 12 red zone targets coming into this game. Game on the line. Mon in zone. Courtney Davis! You don't make any bigger catches than this one. The Aggies are trying to break a streak. And he's working against one of the best cover men in the country in Greedy Williams. 
And Kellen Mond, who has struggled this entire half through a strike, and Courtney Davis made it count. Four catches, 64 yards for Davis, and a touchdown on the final possession. And Jimbo Fisher elects to play for more football. Seth Small. Sends us to overtime. There is a flag down. It looked like LSU might be off sides. And does that change Jimbo Fisher's mind? Offside, defense, Belly's decline. Kick is good. We'll go to overtime. Kellen Mon to the sophomore from Houston, Courtney Davis with the catch of his life. Sends us to extra football in College Station. AM throws a touchdown pass to Courtney Davis, and here we are. And it's Justin Jefferson on an end around, and he gets near the 22 yard line. The other direction to force an overtime. Burrow deflected at the line, third down. That was Kiki. Kingsley Kiki does a great job. He gets his hands up. He's not going to get to the passer. They were trying to get it to Morrow again. He's had a couple of big catches in this game, one for a touchdown. Kiki that time able to get his hands up and get the deflection. Largely a quiet night for one of the better performers of the Aggie defensive front and another third down. The Aggies have not been good on third down here tonight and largely because of Joe Burrow and his scramble. And there's movement on the line as there was confusion with Burrow and Brosset there near the end of the play clock. Twelfth man. Part of the snap, ball start, off the 76, five yard penalty, third down. That's the twelfth man. And it was like, I don't know if it was near a full throw because there's a lot of folks that left this stadium and came back in as you see, Austin Deculus, second time he's been flagged this game for a false start. And it's owing to the crowd noise here at Kyle Field. Listen to the 12th man here on the third and 12. Burrow, under pressure, sacked at the 32. Alaka got him. He's got to get rid of this football. If for nothing else, to try to preserve field position for a field goal attempt. Alaka able to get there, beating the block of Nick Brissett. It cost LSU another four or five yards. Tracy's 21 of 23 inside. 50 yards, but missed one tonight. This from exactly 50 to give LSU the lead. Line drive right through. Boy, how big has Tracy been this season? Boy, he sculled this one. Because that ball was low from the get-go. I was a little surprised it even cleared the line, but as you mentioned, already missed one earlier in this game, bounced off the crossbar. Then the win, That's, as they say, that for one the thin. transfer from Assumption College as the LSU defense walks back onto the field, Chris. And they're going to have to get their emotions in check, and quickly, Jacob Phillips and Kerry Vinson Jr. had to be separated. They were in each other's faces screaming at each other before coming out. The Aggies can win it with a touchdown here. If they don't score, LSU will claim victory. Come on. To Sternberger inside the five, but he fumbled. He fumbled the football. Now they call it incomplete. Greedy Williams had it and could end the game. But a late signal is an incompletion here. I, I don't know. It looked to me like he possessed that football before it came out. 
That looks like a catch and a fumble. You see AM, they're wanting to snap this football quickly. They got exactly what they wanted. The Sternberger, who was lined up to the right of the formation. And it looked to me as if he possessed his football and it came jar, it came out. Austin talking to the crew upstairs and to Coach O. Sternberger was bringing that football down. Was it moving as Delpit makes the hit? That'll be the question. Did he have firm control and turn to make a football move? See him here with Delpit coming in. Separate Sternberger from the football. If this proves to be a fumble, that would be the Second potential game inning play, and they're saying no, incomplete pass. Matt Austin went over there and consulted with Ed O. No announcement made, and we play on, and Travion Williams inside the 15 yard line. 12 more, and another Aggie first down. Outside run all the way. Great job that time by Carson Green at right tackle. Able to get Travion Williams clean and downhill to the perimeter. And first down yardage, a fresh set of downs inside the 14-yard line. Fourth straight game going over 100 for Williams. Mine this time keeping inside the 10, inside the 5, and marked down at the 4. Well, that time a nice block by Sternberger on the edge versus Jacoby Stevens. It allowed Mond to pick up about another 4 or 5 yards. Great ball fake in the backfield as well by Mond and Travion Williams. here to see if that was a first down and will set up a first and goal for Texas A&M. Talk about a clutch field goal earlier for LSU. So you take a sack, you're able to get it in the end zone. And we've seen LSU turn A&M away once they're inside the 20, forcing field goals. We've already documented this is effectively a red zone possession. The red zone woes. A touchdown wins it, of course. The field goal only ties it and sends you to another stanza here in the overtime period. Aggies at the doorstep trying to end LSU's winning streak. Williams, first and goal run inside the two. He tried to hammer it home. You see Williams with two now. He's been able to get in there, get in the red zone. You think of the opening possession, and ran it right in. And now you've got four cracks at the end zone from the one yard line. Williams has won six consecutive overtime games. And they won't get in here as it's a tackle for loss and a loss of maybe two. It's Divinity and company were in there. Well, this is a heck of a play by Rashard Lawrence from the backside. He makes this play, number 90. That time working against left tackle Dan Moore. He got underneath that block right now. We've seen him do it twice in this game. He ended up losing two yards. A great play by number 90 to push the Aggie offense back. Second and goal from the three. The Aggies have run it every single time out of this formation. Mon keeps it. And he'll lose yardage. Jacoby Stevens at the six. 
Kobe Stevens is on the edge right here. And watch him close and then float right back out. He did not sink inside on the fake handoff. Mon pulls it. And there were LSU defenders waiting on him. Think about Rashard Lawrence. Get that negative yardage play. Second set up the second down. Another negative yardage play. Started out at first and goal from the one. Mon, nobody home. He's throwing it towards Courtney Davis and Kendrick Rogers' side. And clear miscommunication. You can see Jimbo Flip. You see Fisher coming out on the field. Dylan Mon likes immediate feedback. He got it on that one. Coach Fisher is saying, look, man, we can't have you going to the left side of that formation. Both receivers. Not within five yards of that throw. Seth Small from 24 yards. How about that LSU goal line stand? And we play on to a second overtime in College Station. We're back to back possessions for the Aggie offense. We alternated between each overtime. So Mon, on the first and 10. Upstairs, it goes Davis already has one amazing catch to extend the game in regulation. Can't do it this time as Terrence Alexander's there. The ball sails on Mond this time. Working against Alexander and had it coming out of the break. Just a bad ball. You know, the receivers here in the second half haven't done Mond a ton of favors. That time Mond had time to throw on first down. And the ball sailed on Courtney Davis, who was the hero on the game tying drive, including the tying touchdown. Williams finds hole inside the 15, inside the 10, first and goal. This is zone to the left. That time AM does a great job up front covering up the LSU jerseys. Travion Williams gets outside, tries to cut back. Ends up being, being met by Delpit and Todd Harris, but not before he picked up a first down inside the 10. And as we just mentioned, the LSU defense was able to bow its neck with even less field to defend. Williams. Inside the four. Kobe Stevens making that tackle. Again, we talked about Williams and his cutback ability. What I like so much about him, he doesn't try to do too much with the cutback. If he sees something open up backside, he sticks it downhill, especially when you're playing with a short field. Don't get too cute, don't go lateral, get downhill as quickly as possible. This is his 30th rush of the game. It's Mon with Williams blocking in front. Touchdown. The QB stretch play. Except you end up getting angles right at the point of attack. You see Ryan McCollum, number 77. Able to pull outside and escort Mond into the end zone. Williams, the lead blocker. And this time, the Aggies able to capitalize on a first down and goal to go. Small's extra point is good. LSU went from celebrating a victory, which was overturned, to having to score a touchdown in the second overtime to keep the game going. Sing one rushing tonight. And like Mon takes off with a tailback blocking in front for six. Effectively the same play, as you mentioned. You're just going to run a stretch play into the boundary with your quarterback and a lead blocker out in front. And once again, first down efficiency for LSU showing up again. That was Joe Burrow's 20th carry. That was a design carry on that run.
And it's 21 carries, and it's a first down, down to the 11. That time Joe Burrow pulled a Travion Williams. Quarterback counter, and he sticks it right up in the middle. Kingsley Kiki had a chance to make the tackle. Burrow runs right through it. Able to pick up a first down. And just outside the 10-yard line, LSU can still convert. Burrow, end zone, chase, incomplete. Could not bring it down to the ground as that ball was resting next to him. Working against Miles Jones. And, oh, it looks like a catch to me. Oh, does he bounce it out? Does he lose possession? And Miles Jones punches it out. Right as Chase is going to the ground, and he has to survive the ground. That ball was coming out. You see Jones splitting the hands of the receiver, and he knocks it out before Chase goes to the ground. That's twice Miles Jones, and effectively the same scenario, has been able to rally and use that 6-4 frame of his to deny a would-be touchdown catch. Leon Renfro was ejected for targeting in the South Carolina game, which pressed Jones into action, and he has been one of the starters since. He is. Prevents Chase from scoring that touchdown there. That was textbook. You talk to these defensive coaches, defensive back coaches, you split the hands of the receiver, especially when they're trying to high point that ball. Jones able to knock it loose before what would have been a touchdown. Right now, you look at it, second 10 on the 11-yard line. LSU can get a fresh set of downs. A&M was able to get it down there and was denied the end zone by the LSU defense on a second and 10. Can the Aggies bow their necks and keep the Tigers out of the end zone here in overtime? Burrow with Brosette blocking in front. And he's out near the five. And to further the point about these attempts, his career high before this game in rushing attempts was 13. Nine more than that tonight. Now he's been the difference maker all night long. And it's been largely as a runner. It's been the Joe Burrow show. We talked about it. Coming into this game, AM. They only give up 80 yards rushing, not tonight. It's been more than double that, 185 rushing yards for LSU. Third and four, same play. Fourth down at the three. Landis Durham on the tackle. That time a good job by Donovan Wilson of setting the edge. He came up quickly on Nick Brissett, you see LSU they want to run this play quickly. Brosette stretches to the goal line. Touchdown. And it was running around to get set still. Donovan Wilson able to slip out. And we play on in College Station. The last game of the SEC regular season is quite possibly its best. Beginning with this third overtime. Each team kicking field goals in the first overtime and scoring touchdowns in the second. The story of this overtime has to be that LSU goal line stand. Otherwise, we never even make it to the second one, much less the third. And of course, the other story is Joe Burrow, career high, 23 carries, 80 yards. Nick Brissett got into the end zone. He's got fresh legs. The guy hadn't had to do much on that one. Burrow, end zone, caught, D. Anderson. A 
AM brought corner pressure from the opposite side, the left side of the formation. You see Renfro doesn't get home. Miles Jones, who was able to break up a would be touchdown catch earlier, had a chance that time. Dean Anderson just kind of casually reached over to the left side of his hip, came up with a catch. Renfro with the home run ball after running it down AM's throat in the second overtime. And now must go for two. Wasted no time getting in that time. At the top of your screen, this is Justin Jefferson. Burrow rolls out. Got it. Jefferson. We started with Jefferson out wide. They move him in motion all the way across the formation. And he's able to outflank Deshaun Caper Smith for an easy two point conversion. And that's the first two point conversion that LSU has executed this season. Good coming, a more important time. Here is the third, the goal line stand. It started with Rashard Lawrence. Then Kellen Mond with a muddy read. He pulls it. And LSU stayed at home, and then nobody home on the third down pass attempt. Trying to throw to Courtney Davis and Kendrick Rogers' side of the formation. And LSU with a one play strike in the third overtime. They were able to get the two point conversion, as you mentioned, Taylor, and all the pressure now on Texas AM having to score not only a touchdown, but convert a two point conversion. Will throw on first down. In zone incomplete. Just over the hand of Jamon Osmond. So both offenses here in the third overtime. Going for home run balls. At that time, too high. Greedy Williams underneath it. Grant Delpit over top. And Osmond in the middle. You talk about a difficult proposition. You're talking about two of the best defensive backs in the country. They can play the ball in the air, and unsurprisingly, an incomplete pass for the Aggie offense. Adrian Williams with 173 rushing yards. As Gillespie will stand in front of Williams here. And a whistle and a flag. I can tell, I wonder, like Gillespie might have been a little bit early. He's going to say he was going in motion. It was right at the snap. That's what he's arguing, at least. It did look like he was moving laterally from his fullback position. There's no foul for false start. The player went in motion legally. Replayed it out. Right, so here's the 12th man, Gillespie. Now watch him. He's going to move laterally right before the snap. Watch him move this way. The flag came out, Matt Austin, as he explained. False start. He was motioning laterally before the snap. Well, they won't run that play as Gillespie comes to the bench and Mons back in shotgun with Williams to his left. All kinds of time, but nothing to find. Jump ball to the end zone. Rodgers, I think, made that catch. And there's a flag. Wow. The P.I. all over. How does he make this catch? But does. I don't think that ball ever made contact with the ground. Watch Terrence Alexander pull his left hand down. And Rodgers stays with this football. It almost bounced off his chest and his shoulder pads and enabled him to make the catch. Now, of course, he had an incredible game against Clemson and made a big touchdown catch, but they were not able to get the two-point conversion. They'll have to do that here to keep this game alive. That is a huge target. You look at Kendrick Rodgers on the hoof. Pass interference, number 11 defense. Penalty's decline, touchdown. So here comes your two point conversion play. LSU converted their first of the season. The Aggies haven't converted one this year either. 
what they saw, they ended up taking Jefferson all the way across the formation. Jefferson started out up here. Here's Jamon Osmond. Probably their most reliable receiver prior to his injury. To extend the game. On. Got it! It's Rodgers again! Why not stay with a hot hand? Kendrick Rogers with the touchdown catch and the two point conversion. And we remain tied after three overtimes. Are you happy now? Mr. Ryan. Kendrick Rogers has been battling injuries all season after that terrific 120 yard receiving performance and two touchdowns against Clemson. He hasn't had another one this year until the third overtime and he gets the two pointer as well. Aggie stay on the field and it's Williams on the ground and near another first down at the 15. And they missed a false start on Travion Williams on that carry. Facing the SEC West, serious bowl implications. We got a first year coach of Jimbo Fisher trying to get a signature victory. It doesn't get much better. Williams, no place to go. And he is swallowed up by Neil Farrell. Indecisive on this run. It's getting strung out, just get out there. That time kind of floated a little bit behind the line of scrimmage. Farrell did a good job of stringing that play out. Of course, another fine product out of Mobile, Alabama. A big negative yardage play for the LSU defense. Mon rifles another one, and Osmond can't make the catch, but here comes the flag as Jacob Phillips levels Osmond at the end of the play. Six four, two hundred thirty pound linebacker Jacob Phillips dropping back. He's just trying to separate the receiver from the ball, and you can see they won't allow you to strike a player anywhere with the crown of the helmet. You can see Phillips lowering his head, also to the head and neck area of Osman, but the crown of the crown of the helmet also would be operative here on that targeting penalty on the on the field. Phillips has played a whale of a game, 11 tackles tonight. He has. He's shown up in coverage as well a time or two versus Sternberger, the tight end for A&M, and he has been very active. Got a couple of pressures early on in the first half. But I'll be surprised if he's able to continue in this game. And Coach Ogeron saying, look, he's... The receiver is trying to make a play on the ball. My defender, and, and it's, I get the point that's being made because Osmond's trying to catch the ball. He lowers himself at the last second. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number six is disqualified. Meaning that Phillips will have to miss the first half of the bowl game, whether that's in the New Year Six or someplace else. Well, and he'll. Also missed the rest of this overtime period and a first down again on the eight yard line for the Aggie offense and LSU down a linebacker. And it's not the first time they've had to deal with this. And part of the rule that I don't like here is him having to go to the locker room, at least let him stay on the sidelines. 
Gillespie uh, back in in front of Williams. And Williams follows his big full back inside the five. Down to the four. Second and goal. A new wrinkle we haven't seen all game. As you see Phillips exiting Kyle Field. That time AM brought orbit motion. That means the motion man goes behind the quarterback and the running back, the entire formation, trying to pull the LSU defender's eyes wide and away from the play. We've seen this play many times this game, downhill out of the pistol. That time with the lead blocker in Gillespie. Mon scored on this play two overtimes ago. He gets nothing this time. Third down. Well defended by Patrick Queen. Sets the edge, gets out wide. Jacoby Stevens as well coming up. Getting upfield on Kellen Mon. That play was pretty much dead from the get-go. LSU had it flanked, did a great job of running to the perimeter to deny Kellen Mon. As you mentioned, that was the play they effectively had the same success. We're able to get into the end zone. That time, Mon denied setting up this third down. Did not punch it in in the first frame when the Aggies could have won the game on a third and goal. This time, Mon extending the play over the head of Sternberger, covered up by Delpit, fourth down. Well covered in the end zone. That's been the story mostly of the second half, where Kellen Mond hasn't felt like he had anywhere to go initially with the football. That time he threw all the way back towards the middle of the field, dealt it in coverage. And AM, with this secondary, lucky to have a possession to even kick a field goal here. So Seth Small with another chip shot. The 21-yarder is straight through. So LSU can now win it. Three-point lead. And of course, a touchdown here puts it away for the Tigers. Fake to Fournette. Burrow to Moreau inside the 10, and he holds on to the ball as Pryor tries to pry it loose. First and goal. Donovan Wilson had a nice break on this ball. You can see Burrow with the ball fake to the right. And Donovan Wilson was just a hair late. And Morrow, who has come up big in this game, back-to-back -back games after a career high last week versus Rice. And Jimbo Fisher desperately trying to get a timeout and does. Gray and in, who's split out now over Jefferson. Leonard Fournette down to the six. Fournette has gone from being buried on the depth chart to scoring his first career touchdown last week and playing a huge role tonight. Opened up the entire game. First play of the game, a pass to Leonard Fournette. He ended up getting, look at talking with Kevin Falk, one of the best running backs in SEC history, certainly in LSU history. Can't learn from anybody better than that. Burrow set back in. Burrow follows him, changes direction, wrapped up. Tyrell Dotson, the first to him, third down. Well, both offenses trying the right side, and perhaps even a Sugar Bowl peach fiesta for LSU. A lot on the line, and a streak to be broken, perhaps for AM. Burrow takes off. Down at the three. Landis Durham on the tackle. And Coach O says kick it. We want to take a look at it, though, didn't he? He leaned in there for a second. And Coach O, you see Burrow. Boy, he is battle weary. Number nine for LSU has seen a ton of work. And it hasn't all been designed. 
but he has battled. You could see why the LSU coaching staff was so taken with Joe Burrow, and he has earned his stripes tonight. Cole Tracy, one of the best in the country, from 21 yards to send it to a fifth overtime. Play of game, offense. Five-yard penalty. Wow. Remains fourth down. Now, you could, or, yeah, you could argue that this, the angle has improved. He has to hit less of a draw now than he went from 21 yards. But this was clearly not designed, as you see the consternation on Coach Ogeron's face. Certainly not pleased after Tracy split the uprights. Transfer from Assumption College has made 92 field goals in his career. Now from 26. Fifty-two to fifty-two, and we're headed to a fifth overtime. You know, you have effectively killed our post-game meeting. I just want you to no, know that. Not right. quite. Well, we're going to go watch this play here as we get ready for the fifth overtime. And Burrow finds Tory Carter for his first catch of the game in the fifth overtime. I think that's the 11th different receiver for Joe Burrow. So he's spreading it around. He's certainly been given plenty of time to do so. Only his third catch of the season for the sophomore from Leesburg, Georgia. First set on the toss to the 11th. Here's the thing, I and mean, we touched on it earlier. It's been Joe Burrow left, Joe Burrow right, Joe Burrow scrambling, maybe a couple of throws sprinkled in. Nick Brissett, he's had a pretty quiet night. I mean, we're talking 14 rushes now. We're in the fifth overtime. So if anything, you got fresh legs, and of course he's back over on the sideline. The number one running back for LSU tonight has been its quarterback, number nine, who's under center now. Been a while since Edwards Elayer has been in the game. Here he is. Looks like he's going to throw. Carter, touchdown. Why not? Well, if Burrow's going to be your runner, then Edwards Elayer naturally should be your passer. <laughs> and Tory Carter should be the receiver, who we just mentioned gets almost no targets and now makes two catches in the fifth overtime. Now, how does that conversation start? Is Torrey still here? Murdered a two-pointer for the first time all season in the third overtime. He's got Foster Morrow all the way to the bottom of the screen. And a miscommunication with Jefferson. So the lead is six to keep the game going and then can win it if they get the two-point conversion. And facing the rush, steps up and takes off. Inside the five to the four. Mon sees a rush lane. This is a pass all the way. But he ends up scrambling. You see the umpire, maybe with a key block that time was just enough to slow down Micah Baskerville and allow Mond to pick up another eight yards. You see Richard Lawrence. Two LSU Tigers and down. Michael Divinity. Yep. Keep in mind they're without Jacob Phillips who has been ejected for targeting in overtime. This would be in Divinity yet another linebacker who will obviously have to lead the game for at least one play if he is in fact okay and can return later. He'll have to leave for one snap as will Richard Lawrence. Divinity had the 58 yard fumble recovery for a touchdown that Devin White caused in regulation. 
run around the quarterback and just collide into one another. You see it right here. It's friendly fire. And they're just rushing the passer as best they can. Well, it's a first and goal for Texas A&M from the LSU four-yard line. And Gillespie of the fullback back in there in front of Williams. Travion with 33 carries tonight and 186 rushing yards. LSU without their two, two of their starting linebackers and a starting defensive end. And here he is following Gillespie, but cannot get the edge as that speed from Stevens shows up again. I mentioned Jacoby Stevens earlier. This is a heck of a play by number three. Uh, he has been in coverage a lot tonight with Jay Sternberger, and this time sliding off the blocks, gets upfield, forces a negative yardage play. AM, they get first and goal, and they start going backwards. This will be their hundredth offensive snap. From the five on a second down. Empty backfield, Mon loses more yardage. Patrick Queen, who almost had an interception some three or four hours ago with the tackle for loss. That was really poorly blocked that time by AM. QB draw all the way, thought they were going to catch LSU dropping. Patrick Queen did a great job getting upfield again. Back to back plays. Great job by the LSU defense. That's their 12th tackle for loss tonight. AM with as many as two plays to go six yards and tie it. Mon into traffic incomplete. Six players down there, two for the Aggies. It hit Kendrick Rogers, fourth down. He had Jay Sternberger and came off of it. See him came off it pretty quickly. Had plenty of time this time. Only three rushers. Again, Devin White right there. And as you mentioned, the two receivers right on top of each other. Kendrick Rogers with the circus catch earlier that time. He and Jamon Osmond right on top of one another in the end zone in an incomplete pass. Jimbo Fisher calls timeout on a fourth and goal. His team has been at the brink numerous times tonight converted a 19-yard touchdown to send the game to overtime and already converted a fourth down and a two-point conversion to keep the game going we'll have to do it again here well dave aranda said earlier as you can hear the officials they're trying to get the aggies out of their huddle they want both the teams out there and playing but he didn't want jimbo fisher to beat him we're going to come down to Kellen Mond. Well, you've got a fourth down play, and your opponent has to score a touchdown to tie it up. Unless you had a chance to put it away, it's in the fifth overtime now, and it comes down to this. And now the Tigers call timeout. Let's go. Mond. End zone, touchdown, Rodgers again. Mon stepping up in the pocket. Didn't flush out, kept his eyes downfield, and he's able to hit Kendrick Rodgers, who they have listed at 6'4". This guy is 6'6", if he's an inch. And he has come up huge. You mentioned the big game he had versus Clemson. Kellen Mond had a career day that day. This is an even bigger performance. Now for the win. If AM gets it, it's over. If LSU stops them, we go to a sixth overtime. Mond with all kinds of time. And it's incomplete. He wanted Jamon Osbon, but Greedy Williams was all over him. 
and we go to a sixth overtime at Kyle Field. Do you want to wrap things up now? And plus, they're out of Gatorade. They've already dumped it all on the LSU sideline. <laughs> Coach O takes the bath. But a little too soon. And this has turned into the game of the week on rivalry weekend. And Mon has Sternberger! Touchdown! He was lined up at wing. It's a formation we've seen a lot this game. We haven't seen them throw it. The Wilter Oyster, from a receiving standpoint, they've all contributed now here in the overtimes. Mon, Rogers again. Why not? Kendrick Rogers is a big dude. Working against Kerry Vincent. I mean, what are you gonna do? That's a, that's a jump ball versus a 6'5, 6'6 receiver. Kerry Vincent goes about 5'10. He's given up half a foot. That's before Kendrick Rogers jumps. And this kid has come alive here in overtime. And keep in mind, made the big catch to set up in the in the two-minute drive before AM clocked it. It was Rodgers with the big catch along the boundary. Scratch what I said about the voices. The 12th yeah. man is back. Yeah, they're pushing through, man. They went and got some uh, Ricola breath mints or something. <laughs> Burrow with his best performance as an LSU Tiger down to the 17. Takes a shot. The third big shot. He's taking a lot of shots in this game. The third big shot. He was slipping around earlier, but he bounced right up after that run. LSU must score a touchdown and a two point conversion. Grosset wrapped up. Big loss. Alaka, the first one to him. Alaka, nice upfield right now. Watch him undercut the block. And Brosette, who's trying to string it out, floating. Dalen Mack is there to finish it up, as is the balance of the Aggie defensive front. And Alaka, the leading tackler for AM, comes up with a big negative yardage tackle. Missed a couple of practices due to the concussion protocol. Showing up big on that overtime snap. Burrow. Jefferson makes the grab inside the five, first and goal. This ball hung in the air almost as long as this game has gone on. It just kind of floats. It looks like it might have gotten picked by a lock as LSU's over the football quickly. And Burrow keeps it himself. Touchdown to LSU. Now it's the two-point conversion to try to keep the game going. Great read right here by Burrow. As you see AM crashing down, Tyrell Dodson too far upfield. And Burrow just hit Jefferson on the run. This time a different formation. Burrow got it. D. Anderson says he's not ready to go home. Dick Vitale in Cameron Indoor Stadium once said, I want to stay here all night. That's what we're doing in College Station today. Is it Sunday yet? We play on. So if LSU wins, you can count on it. They're in the New Year's Six in one of those three games. If the Aggies win, they could be headed to the state of Florida for a bowl game for the first time since 1957 in what was Bear Bryant's last game as the head coach of the Aggies. I think this game started shortly after that. <laughs> the Burrow, home run ball. Tangled up in the end zone and the flag comes in as D. Anderson with a one-on-one -on -one battle with Larry Pryor. It was Charles Oliver, I think, in there for the injured Miles Jones. 
Miles Jones ended up. Pass interference, defense number 21. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, you're right, Oliver came in there after Jones got banged up. Oliver a starter most of the season. You can see he just panics right here. I haven't seen a lot of snaps, you're in overtime. D. Anderson, who calmly made a touchdown catch earlier, working against Miles Jones, the cornerback whom Charles Oliver replaced. And Oliver that time with a P.I. to try to deny what he thought would have been a touchdown scoring catch. Burrow running all night into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, we talked to the A&M defensive coaches. We asked them, well, who does Nick Brissett remind you of? Version practice in for next season. This is higher than the Tiger Aggie basketball score. This one deflected, and even though it's caught, it's short of the goal line as D. Anderson makes the catch. So the Aggies can tie it if they score a touchdown, but win it with a two point conversion. Kendrick Rogers has been unstoppable for Texas A&M since they went to overtime. Quite literally. How does he make this catch? We still haven't figured that one out. Comes up with another big one along the back end line. And then, of course, another big snag. That one will be carry Vincent. Number 13 has been a menace here in the back end of the fourth quarter, the final drive, and certainly in the overtime periods. Number 13 emerging as a go-to target. But they'll start this overtime with Kendrick Rogers on the sidelines. And how about that history made on Kyle Field tonight in College Station? The last game of the year in the SEC is the game of the year period. Travion Williams still running hard down near the 12 on his 35th carry. AM opens the overtime and 10 personnel. No tight ends, one running back, and they got the box count that they wanted. They had the numbers to cover up the defenders, and it took Grant Delpit coming up and again making an open field tackle on one of the best runners in the conference of Travion Williams. First and go, first and 10 for the Aggies from the LSU 12. AM staying same formation this time to the opposite side of the field. Mon takes off but goes down Devin White. It looked like there was miscommunication on that one. Because Travion Williams looked like he was setting up to pass protect and Mon took off almost like it was a QB draw. I don't think he failed on the throw that quickly. Travion Williams was stepping up, looked like he was ready to pick up a blitzer or a second level pass rusher. It's a loss of four. Aggies can get a first down at the LSU two. <laughs> throwing behind Sternberger, incomplete third down. Last two plays for the Aggies offensively out of sync. I forget the big run from Travion Williams to open up this overtime. You get Mond on what looked like a QB draw, at least for what he thought was a QB draw, and then a bad ball. And of course, there's bound to be a few bad plays when you run 106 of them. Well, this will be a school record 107th. Rodgers in the game now, right here, the bottom of your screen. Mon strike to Davis. Touchdown. And Courtney Davis, I guess he felt like he was getting overlooked. Rogers getting all the attention. So why not catch another touchdown? 
It was Davis with one second on the clock after making three catches prior to get AM down the field that scored the tying touchdown. Who has the football here for Jimbo Fisher? Well, we've seen Rodgers, who's right here in the middle of the three, and Sternberger, who's been relatively quiet, other than the big catch for a touchdown, but one play over time, and Jimbo took a look at what LSU was going to do there, called timeout, wants to talk it over with his quarterback. Ed Ogeron livid with his defense after giving up that wide open touchdown to Courtney Davis. He can't believe it. You know what part of it is? It's because he's, oh, man, I've been wet for 30 minutes with this Gatorade. This dry fit stuff doesn't work nearly as well as I thought it would. <laughs> it's a game that's about to be five hours long, running nearly 200 plays. But it can all end here if the Aggies convert. And you've got options across the board. And keep in mind, though, the LSU at times throughout this overtime has done an excellent job blanketing coverage. Mond would have to buy time in the pocket. LSU only committing three to rush here, it looks like. And they do. Mond, Rodgers fighting for the ball. Pass interference on Greedy Williams. It was going to be another jump ball in the corner. Wow, how about another that? Another flag. And the field judge threw his hat. He was out of flags. Pass interference. Defense number 29. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the try. Following the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number 29. That panel will be enforced half the distance to the goal also. We'll compete the try. That's 29's first on sports for life of the game. So this ball will be snapped inside the one yard line after two penalties called on Greedy Williams. You see Williams after the P.I. He's telling the field judge about it. The field judge said that's enough. He's getting tired of this game too. These refs have been out there a long time. I don't think I've ever seen that, where you're out of flags, so you throw your hat. It's probably the most convenient thing you could grab, and now you're right there, if you're in the, Ed Ogeron running down once again to get his time out, because you're right here on the goal line after the unsportsmanlike. Here he goes again. The second time he's had to take off. The second time, he almost takes out the line judge. When Dave Aranda's giving him instruction to do it. He kind of smiles. You see, Coach O just kind of looks over to the stands and smiles. How about you take off, Dave, and you call timeout? <laughs> Chris, it's, how are these guys still going at it? <laughs> well, the staff is making fun of Coach O, saying he's still got it, and per pretending that they popped a hamstring. I'll tell you what, he, he broke nicely on both of those timeouts. Well, the officials blowing their whistle. They're ready to see this They're one to come play. to a close. And we have made history in College Station tonight. Play clock is running down inside 15 seconds. As Texas A&M will go right to the line. Three tight ends in the game and a fullback. And a false start. You broke the huddle late, Office the play clock. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the try. Keaton Sutherland, who was starting at right guard the last few games, starting at left guard tonight. And this, of course, changes things. See the left guard trying to get a quick jump. Coach O loves it. It's good to lose after that timeout call. That's just the third penalty called on Texas A&M tonight. Well, it came at a horrible time if you're an Aggie fan because it was obvious what they were about to do, slam it right up in there and see if they couldn't get it in for two. Rodgers in the slot. 
from outside the five. Mon looking that way. Got it! It's Rodgers! The Aggies win the game of the year in the Southeastern Conference. Texas A&M ends a seven-game losing streak to LSU. Jimbo Fisher has his statement victory as the head coach of the Aggies, and the rivalry is on. Here he is with Chris. Coach Fisher, you nearly lost that one three separate times. What did your team prove to you tonight? Now we're going in the right direction. We can overcome adversity. A long way to go to get back. The heart and soul of these guys amazing and how far they came and learning to play with confidence and big moments. What were you telling your team in that final drive like two hours ago and in between each of those overtimes First to keep moment, it up? You walked on the field, you gotta believe in two minutes. We worked two minutes religiously played hard. Guys were great. I can't say enough about all the players, Kelly and everybody. But I mean just you gotta believe you're gonna do it. As you finish second in the West, where does this match the expectations you had for this program going Listen, in? Listen, uh, my expectations would be at the top, but we have to take steps at a time. We progress. We let some games slip away later on, but it's a heck of a conference. We got second in this. Hey, that's a starting point. Now we got to get better and move on. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. LSU overcomes every kind of obstacle imaginable, but they cannot dodge the final bullet as Kendrick Rogers was unstoppable in each of the overtimes. And he makes the game-winning catch here. It doesn't end any better than this. It could have ended a bunch of times, but it couldn't end any better than this for A&M. As you see, Ed Ogeron can't believe it. They had this game won multiple times he got the goal line stand on a first and goal inside the one yard line you turn a and back you force a field goal and after six ot's the aggies able to get to their eighth victory 74 72 the highest scoring game in college football history man alive it doesn't get me better than this Hi. <laughs> Anything crazy happened? Good to have you with us. That was incredible. Dory, Doring, Chiswick, riding right along with you through the fifth seven overtime game in the history of college football, the highest scoring game in the history of FBS football. Go. I don't even know how to break it down. I mean, I, there's. Oh, you can't. Well, I mean, it was just play after play. It wasn't like a bunch of mistakes. These were high-quality plays that were oh. being made in the clutch time and time again, starting with that final drive where Texas A&M got an extra opportunity on an overturned interception. I mean, well, how many plays had to turn out that way for us to end up here with 146 total points? Total gut check. I mean, th this game, th these were two exhausted teams. If you look at the last drive, you got offensive and defensive guys that can't even move. A&M ran over, well over 100 plays. Yeah. So, but you're looking at star performances in clutch times. Yeah. Look at what Kellen Mond did. Mm -hmm. The way he, the, his accuracy, he threw for six touchdowns. Now, I know we were in seven overtimes, <laughs> but six <laughs> touchdowns, I lost track of how many two-point conversions he converted. The receivers on his, yeah. on both ends were catching footballs. Um, that, that game, the, the receiver play crazy. reminded you of that Texas A&M game against Clemson, right? In the clutch where they were making big catches. You remember Kendrick Rogers making some big time plays down there in the red zone? Did so tonight multiple times. Courtney Davis, the oh, one to send it to, to overtime. Take it overtime. Yeah, just ridiculous plays by Kellen Mond of that receiving court. And, and, and let's go back there right now because the celebration continues as Chris Button, you saw her with Jimbo Fisher. Here she is. 
with Kellen Ma, the A&M quarterback. Kellen, can you put into words how you pulled this one out? Just a team that is always going to keep fighting, and that's what Coach Fisher emphasizes. You know, we're going to keep, we're going to keep competing, and we're going to dominate. And this team never quit, and no matter what. And we knew coming into this game it was going to be a tough game, but this team never quit, and that's what I love about it. Walk me through the final drive of regulation and how you kept your composure. Just the same thing, just same thing as practice. Uh, Coach Fisher has us prepared so hard, so when, we come, so when we come out to the game, it becomes easy, and you know we just kind of thrive and trust everybody else on the field. We talked about this rivalry and the streak. What does it mean to finally snap the seven-game losing streak to this team? You know, this is what we play football for, uh, for these big games like this, and we, when we come out with a win, it's an amazing feeling. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, this is, here's what I think is great about this. Look, first of all, the scene that we see at Kyle Field is one thing. Playing around on Twitter as we're going through these overtime, the entire country got to watch a performance from Kellen Mond, got to watch Joe Burrow, got to watch both defenses try everything they could. Both offenses make big play after big play. Look, welcome to the SEC Network. If you don't watch a lot of it from wherever you are in the country, this is not typical SEC football. But my goodness, we're glad you were part of it. Yeah. How, how, how about, about some it? of the play calling that went on down the stretch? And, and we, so many different facets of this game to highlight. But the play calling, we had the halfback pass by Edwards Hilaire. Yeah. Had the, the fake tunnel screen. Screening Chase Sternberger. There. Sternberger. Yeah, great call. Great play calls, great play design, and even better execution. Yeah, you know, we're going to talk about the offenses because of all the points scored. And, you know, defensively, look at Texas A&M's defense. They